Commissioner Tesco? Here. Commissioner Henry? Here. Commissioner Hansen? Here. Okay, we're on to awards and presentations. This is starting to become a trend. I think we had this the last public hearing. Uh, today, our, we begin our public hearing today by recognizing the Adams County Fair for receiving an international award of distinction for communications from the International Association of Fairs and Expositions in the following categories. Web advertising, mobile app, mobile website, and website. Melly Snowdell and Mary Willis from the Parks Department dedicate countless hours and effort into the fair and certainly deserve this prestigious award for the fair and the county. Nathan Mosley, as the new Ad director of Adams County Parks Open Space, Nathan, would you like to step forward and say a few words? And if you'd like to bring up Let's bring Courtney up too. She's our intern as well. Absolutely. And a former fair queen. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't know that. Well, I, I think it was, it was 2011, right? It was. Okay. I, I was mistaken. I saw a photo with 2010, but that was the year that she was lady in waiting. Or is that correct? Yes, that okay. is correct. Okay. So thank you, commissioners. Good morning. Um, I do, I, I've only been here since last week, but I do know that these women have a passion for what they do for the fair and for the residents of Adams County. So I thank the association for giving us this award and wanna turn it over to them if they would like to say any words on behalf of all the work that they do out at the fair. Melanie Snowdell, and I would just like to thank also the association, but also you for recognizing our efforts today. Um, it's an exciting time to be in the county, but it's also a very exciting time to be at the fair with the resources that we have available and the leadership that we have, there is a lot of excitement um, coming for the fair this year. So I, uh, I'm excited for some announcements here coming very soon. And really, I can stand here without hesitation and say that this is just the tip of the iceberg for I think what you guys can expect from, from us and the fair here in the future. So thank you. Thank you. Would you like to say anything, Mary? Nope, she said it all perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioners, would you like to say anything? No? I, I will say this, and I'll try to keep it brief, but, you know, working in the last two years and being associated with the fair and having the opportunity to go out and witness what you do, I mean, you guys are amazing, and I appreciate everything that you do. And I do want to take this opportunity to point out that they have a new program that just started last year, and it's the Funnel Cake 5K, and it's a certified run, and we are going to be doing that again this year. And so if you're not... in familiar with that please go to their website i'm sure it's on the website and the registration and let's have a great turnout this year and again thank you so much for everything that you do thank you thank you, thank you. all right next on the agenda we would like to recognize the adams county csu extension office for receiving the garden partner award for a garden created and updated directly north of the waymare building on the Adams County Fairgrounds. As I tell you about this honor, please take a look at the pictures of the garden. Thankfully, taken during the height of growing season, because I'm sure we don't want pictures of them right now, right? <laughs> this award recognizes excellence in design, vision, community outreach from Plant Select. The garden was designed and planted in 2009 by Adams County Colorado Master Gardeners to demonstrate the principles of low water use landscaping and to showcase plants which thrive under these conditions. Thad Gord with the CSU Extension Office is here with us today. Thad, is he here with us today? Actually, Commissioner, uh, Thad is attending a, a funeral this morning. Um, oh, that's and right. So, and so that's right. I'd ask Kurt Carlson to step in. Well, Kurt, would you like to come up and state your title and name and title for us? Sure, too. Um, Kurt Carlson, Regional Park Manager for Adams County. And with me is Sharon Moore, 
Uh, this is Sharon's concept and really was the champion for bringing this uh, whole garden about. And I just wanted to just briefly mention how, how the whole thing began. In 2008, we were in the midst of the, the dome, Waymeyer Dome building uh, remodel, and we, we had some goals and we wanted to uh, create a demonstration garden that was uh, very conservative as far as the water use, but aesthetics were, was a very high priority for us, and also educational component. And so we partnered and collaborated with uh, CSU Extension, Adams County, and they really uh, hit a home run with this one. Um, this garden has really been a highlight of the entrance to the, to the dome on the north side, which in the past had been a little bit drab, and I can tell you that it's not drab anymore, and it's very educational, very collaborative effort. Um, really want to thank CSU Extension staff, including Sharon, and all the other staff, uh, there's a lot of weeds that were pulled out there, a lot of uh, time spent in the hot sun trying to get it ready for the fair and other events. And also want to uh, thank Botanic Gardens and all the people that, uh, that participated, including the Master Gardeners. Uh, I think this is a, a very much a, a showcase of conservation and collaboration and education, which is something that we all think is very important. So thank you very much. And if Sharon, do you have anything to say? Just a minute. Uh, this is an award that we've wanted to win for over 30 years because we have one demonstration garden at the fairgrounds. And uh, Plant Select gives an award to the best garden as far as um, beauty and um, water conservation, et cetera. And uh, so this year, out of 90 gardens, Plant Select Gardens, they picked ours as a Golden Shovel Award. Awesome. Yeah. So it's pretty amazing. Well, could, could we have everyone in the audience that's associated with this project to stand up, please? We just want to show our recognition for all of you. Thank you. Now, if we could, we'll have all of you, if you would like to come step forward, and we'll take a photo in front. Okay.
Okay. Finally today, we would like to bring awareness to a great cause. January is National Mentoring Month. In Adams County, one of our one, one in nine ninth graders, one in four ninth graders, I'm, I'm, I'm skipping over here, so. <laughs> one in four ninth graders do not have a caring adult in their lives. According to national research, at-risk youth in a mentoring relationship are less likely to skip school, use illegal drugs and alcohol, or get in fights. This mentoring program allows kids to feel better about themselves and strive to do better in everyday situations. To make this official, Commissioner Hansen, will you read the proclamation? Sure. This is a proclamation declaring National Mentoring Month, January 2015, whereas mentors support our next generation to shape their ambitions, set a positive course, and achieve their boundary, boundless potential. And whereas the National Mentoring Month, we celebrate everyone who teaches, inspires, and guides our children and young people as they reach their potential. And whereas mentors offer valuable encouragement, motivation, and hope for our children and youth by providing a consistent adult friend and role model. And whereas 22% of ninth graders on average in our community report they do not have a caring and trusted adult outside of the home and school, equivalent to more than 1,350 ninth grade students. I think that's probably Adams County students, right? Um, and whereas students who do not have a caring adult outside of home, school are most, almost twice as likely to drink alcohol, 87% more likely to use marijuana, 71% more likely to be truant, and four times as likely to belong to a gang. And whereas mentored children and youth also exhibit improved self-esteem, better relationships, and feel greater connectedness to their community and schools. And whereas partnerships between businesses, schools, and other youth organizations and mentoring programs are an effective way for businesses to support children and youth within the community as mentoring is a proven cost-effective investment for every dollar invested in mentoring there's a three dollar return to society and whereas collective mentoring programs that are supported by uh, the entire community are more visible and therefore able to serve more children and youth and whereas public and private organizations throughout our community are committed to working collaboratively to increase the number of quality mentoring matches uh, now therefore be it resolved by the board of uh, County Commissioners of Adams County, State of Colorado, do hereby proclaim 2015, January 2015 is National Mentoring Month in Adams County and encourages all citizens to stand with the nation and state in recognizing January as National Mentoring Month. We hereby commit to support <coughs> to supporting more children and young people to have access to quality mentors and caring adults in our community. Signed, Charles Chastadesco, Eva J. Henry, and Eric Hansen. Um, and I think Becky Hoffman from the Adams County Youth Initiative is here, um, which we already know because we already took a picture with her. Can I say a couple words? Please Thank come you. forward. Good morning, commissioners and county leadership. Um, again, the Adams County Youth Initiative um, just want to thank you for your support to our partnership. Um, ideally, we would have young people here today to talk about the impact of mentoring. However, if you remember in September, you all signed a proclamation on School Attendance Awareness Month, and so <laughs> we couldn't bring them out of school. But I will say that our partnership um, really spans the whole continuum. We have Senior Hub supporting our third graders, all the way through um, the CASAs and the uh, Denver Youth for Christ serving our kids in the juvenile justice system. So nine mentoring organizations and we're excited that we're trending in the right direction. Actually last year we had 24% of our ninth graders not having a caring adult and we've put a 2% decrease in that. So we're trending in the right direction. We really appreciate your investment in leadership. And if anyone would like to, this evening we're having a friend raiser at Chancho's in Westminster. And um, we're really trying to get the word out about recruiting mentors in our community. So if you'd like to come along and hear about the great work that the mentoring organizations are doing and meet some of our mentees, we'd love to see you tonight, 5.30 to 7. Thank you. Thank you, Bipke. And I'll just reiterate that that, that mentoring and uh, friend raiser is at 530 to 7 Chancho's Highland Hills, and that's 96 and Sheridan in Westminster. And I hope to see you there. I know I'll be there, and I know I've put it out. Please invite every friend you know. Put it out on Facebook, social media, wherever you, you have influence. Please put that out. So thank you very much, Becky. I really appreciate that. Um, the, next, the next thing we want to do is I'd like to take a moment. And uh, thank someone who has stepped forward to help this board immensely over the past few months. Um, I just want to say that, that you know, we had a vacancy in a very key position within the county, 
And we needed somebody to step into that position and fill a void until we could find someone to fill that position uh, permanently. And this person has not only done the job, but done the job exceptionally well and is a current and will be a, a member of the Adams County team. And we wanted to thank him personally for all that he has done. And it is Mr. Mark Moskowitz. And, and by the way, Mark, I, I just want you to know that in my appreciation to you, I had asked that, you know, what would you like to see done, if anything, for all the work that you've put into this? And I think that you said something about fireworks and streamers. Well, I, th <laughs> I, I think we can accommodate you on that. So here we go. This is, this is, this is the thanks, Mark, firework and streamers photo. So. I know this is your last public hearing, and I just want to say thank you. You've done a tremendous job. Um, I'm not sure what the crown is about, but <laughs> I thank you very much. Thank you. All right, so I skipped over part. I readjusted, so I would like to get a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Hanson? Commissioner Tedesco? Yes. And at this time, we're open for citizen comments. Mr. Moskowitz, do we have anybody signed up for? We do. We have one person, um, Kathy O'Neill, is signed up to speak. OK. Kathy, if you'd like to step forward, state your name and address for the record. How are you? Good. My name is Kathy O'Neill, and this is my husband, Philip O'Neill. And I don't know if I'm at the right hearing or not, but I applied for, I've been in business since 08 for Adams, in Adams County uh, Restaurant and Bar, Lulu's Inn. I did not receive my liquor license uh, renewal until November 10th. It expired November 13th. In the meantime, I got a hold of Melissa. I overnighted everything. I thought everything was good to go. She called me. She said, yes, I got the paperwork, Kathy. We're in, you know. Didn't think anything about it. Got a call. Uh, my check was cashed from Adams County through the bank. I was told I was one day late on my liquor license and that I had to cease and desist selling liquor. I have overnighted where I had sent my checks my renewal application, and now they're saying I cannot serve liquor. And I'm trying to get this resolved quicker than applying for a new liquor license. I've been in business seven years. I've never had a violation. It was sent to the wrong address. It was sent to my bookkeepers. So, and I have proof here that she received it on November 6th. And I'm asking you guys to see what I can do to get this ball so I can serve liquor again in my establishment. Melissa has been helpful. I mean, I have every documentation. But once I thought my check was cashed, I thought I was good to go. And I know it takes 90 days, 120 days to get through you guys and to get down to the state liquor board. But in the meantime, now I have 12 employees that they're saying I've got to shut down my restaurant until this goes through the court system. But I never ever, once I, once Melissa and I talked and she said, yes, Kathy, I got it. I thought we were good to go. You know, my copies of my checks, my overnight where they signed for it, a gentleman in this office signed for it. And now I'm asking you guys, what can I do to get my business back open? I mean, it will doom us. I mean, we're a mom and pop shop. And I don't know what I'm asking for your help on what I can do. Well, let me just state that as the Board of County Commissioners, we absolutely want to try to help you. Unfortunately, in the small or limited amount of information that I know about liquor licensing is, is that we don't control that process once it goes past a certain date. That's controlled by the state, and we are controlled as to what we can and can't do by that 
um, through that statute. And, you know, what I would say is that we as a county will do everything possible to try to accommodate any need that you have, okay? But what I would suggest is that you get with our county attorney, Heidi Miller, and maybe they can talk to you after the public hearing and see what steps we can take to ensure that that process is done in a timely manner. Right. There's, there's limited things we can do once it goes to the state. So. And I've spoken to the state several times, along with Melissa. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, she's, but the, if I have to shut down for three months, I will have to sell my business. And I have 15 employees in Adams County that. Right. That, and we don't want that. And, and what I want to do is I want to try to work with you in any means we can. I can't guarantee what that looks like right at this time. But if you would, please, you know, talk to our county Melissa attorney. Melissa and Heidi. And Heidi. Okay. 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 Thank you very much for bringing this to our attention. Thank you. And I'm sorry that I dropped the ball and let it go so long. You know, it was due August 13th. And, and let's see and what I we can do. And I should have been aware of yeah. that. I've had the business for seven years. It just slipped through the cracks. But I feel like I got it there in 90 days, and they're saying no. Right. You know. So just go back with Melissa and Heidi and yes, see please. what I can do from there. Yes, ma'am. So you guys can't issue me a temporary license? It, it's under the state right now, and unfortunately, we do not override the state. Okay. And see, I've talked to the state, and they've said I've got to get it from Adams County before they can do anything. They said, And I've spoke to this gentleman. I have his name. He mm -hmm. said, it sounds like you have all your ducks in a row. So if I can get this done, then I'll go down to the state, correct? Would that well, be my next? I, I can't give you that advice. Okay. What I am telling you is that please talk to our county attorney and the, the attorney that you've been talking to. Okay. And we'll make sure that we can do everything within our power to help you. Okay. And I am extremely sorry about this. I hate to take up your time, but I just need some help right now. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, Mark, do we have anyone else signed up for public comment? No one else has signed up. Elected officials, do we have any comments from the elected officials? Okay. I just basically want to point out that today is um, actually a very historic day in Adams County. It'll be the last public hearing with only three commissioners, which is the way it has been for over 110 years, is three commissioners. Um, so this is the last public hearing um, with three commissioners, and next week we will be having five, which I'm excited for them to, to join us and looking forward to the conversations that the five of us have. Right now, looking forward to the conversations. I'll let you know in six months how that goes. <laughs> but uh, yes, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to a new day uh, once again. I say it very often in the last two years, it's a new day in Adams County, and I am really looking forward to that new day. Anything? So I have a couple things, and, and the first thing I'd like to do is, is say that we have a group called CASA, which is a court-appointed special advocates, and the leader of CASA for the last year, year and a half has been Lissandra Gonzalez. And I learned over the last day that Lissandra will be stepping down as the director of CASA, and I just want to give my congratulations to her in everything that she's done with CASA and for CASA, and I want to say thank you for everything and good luck on the new position with a precious child which is another great organization so Lissandra, if you're listening thank you very much um, the second thing that i would like to say is is that i would like to take a moment to recognize an individual a 16 year old boy who was part of the um, 4-h club and unfortunately was involved in a motorcycle accident and lost his life and so at this time, I'd like to take a moment of silence and show respect for the family, Brett and Margaret Ginther. And this is for Adam Ginther. And a moment of silence, please. Again, thank you very much. And, and I know the family appreciates everything that anybody can do and keep them in your prayers and your hearts. Okay. Moving on, consent calendar. Do I have a motion for consent calendar? Second. Commissioner Hanson? Okay. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Tedesco? Yes. New business, county manager? Uh, no, I'm this morning, commissioners. County attorney? 
I'm making up for that. I do have several executive sessions this um, to take place today. Commissioners, I would ask that you um, approve a motion to adjourn into executive session pursuant to Colorado Revised Statute 2464024E for the purpose of negotiation strategy regarding economic incentives. Do we have a motion? So moved. Okay. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Hansen? Aye. Commissioner Tedesco? Yes. I would also ask that you approve a motion to adjourn into executive session pursuant to Colorado Revised Statute 2464024F for the purpose of discussing a personnel matters for the annual review of the county manager and the county attorney. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Hansen? Aye. Commissioner Tedesco? Yes. And lastly, I would ask that you move to adjourn to an, into an executive session pursuant to Colorado Revised Statute, that should say 2464024A, I'm sorry, that should say 2464024B and E for the purpose of receiving legal advice and negotiation strategy regarding the Fisher case. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Hansen? Commissioner Tedesco? Yes. No further attorney business? No further business, thank you. And seeing no further business on the schedule, we are adjourned.